Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. I hope you're having a good weekend. Today we're going to be looking at the T40 once again, wrapping it up but almost entirely by this point, doing some rusty effects and also some greasy effects. Now we're going to be keeping it pretty simple and quick today. I don't want to go crazy and I have been trying not to lately, so just a couple of basic effects on here to add some nice interest to go with the previous muddy and greasy effects we did on the lower hull, while also adding some more interesting color and weathering on the rest of the tank. Besides, the engine deck was looking pretty boring. Not anymore, so let's get started. So as usual in our hobby, there's about 11 billion different options for rusty effects, and the same goes for greasy effects. You can find countless products, and they all kind of work the same way in the end, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to begin with the exhaust. As you can see, it's already kind of weathered a little bit and painted, this is just some basic stuff I did right when I base painted the tank green. I just painted it with XF72 with a paintbrush just to give it like a chipped effect. That's going to be our base. I'm going to start by applying some rust effects. Now these are actually acrylics technically, but they're more like a gouache. So they actually behave a lot more like, let's say, an oil paint or an enamel effect, as you can see here. As such, they're not like any acrylic paint you're using in this hobby because they're reactivatable. You can basically re-thin them as you can in oil or enamel. They just use water instead. And since they use water, they're very useful if you're gonna maybe use oils or something over top of that because it won't reactivate it. But that doesn't matter, so don't really worry about it. You can use an enamel here just fine. So I began by applying some of the yellow, and then now I'm gonna go with some of the red. I'm thinning them with a little bit of water because they're kind of thick in the jar. And then I just kind of, I'm kind of like stippling it on just to get a little bit like a random rusty texture that kind of fades from light yellow at the very end to kind of a darker red as it goes up towards the tank. So for the pigments, I didn't want to spill them all over the engine deck, so I made like a little mask here using a piece of a uh, sticky note. These are actually very useful when you're painting tools as well when they're glued on the fenders. So this is a good tip to use whenever you need to control your application. I used some Wilder Red Rust pigment and just kind of went over top of the previous Aqualine effect and then I repeated it with Burnt Rust which is yellow, kind of echoing the colors we previously used with the Aqualine but I'm using, I'm using pigments now to get more texture and kind of a more subtle effect so I can blend between the two. And lastly, Old Grease which is basically black, super super dark brown and this is going to be our soot effect. So you can see why I'm using the cart here. I don't want to get that crap all over the engine deck. I only want it on the exhaust for now. And re removing the card, we can see that we have a very nice rusty effect on the exhaust. Pretty straightforward, only needed two effects and three pigments. You can use, like I said, you can use enamels or oil paints instead of the Aqualine. They'll work the same way. And pigments are pretty generic. So with the exhaust complete, we still have a whole lot of real estate we can work on and add some interest to, because engine decks are pretty greasy, so we're going to work on that next. As I showed before, there's a whole bunch of products you can use for this. I'm using MIG Productions Engine Grime Effect because I've never used it before. I've got like five different products that all do the same thing for that. I've also got the corresponding MIG Thinner, any other enamel thinner should do. I guess I should have mentioned that the MIG product is actually an enamel, not an acrylic like before. And as such, it's basically the same as using oil paint for this. However, it just dries a little bit glossy, so it's a little bit more special. Straight out of the bottle, it's a little bit thick, but actually I kind of like it. You can see it makes nice streaks here. And I'm basically just going to put take it straight from the bottle and just start putting it on kind of messily. You can be a little bit, um, a little bit messy here. We're going to clean this up later with some thinner. So right now I'm just kind of layering in, thinking I'm going to put a streak here, I'm going to put a streak here. So I just put a line there, and also a little bit of build up on the top where it's going to kind of collect along that, that seam there. And same thing on the bottom where it builds up along the edge. So right away, I don't let it dry for very long, like five minutes or something like that. I get a little bit of thinner by brush. 
as always, a little bit, wipe it off so it's like 90% dry, and then just kind of get in there and tidy up those streaks. And like I said, don't get a whole bunch of thinner on your brush. You only want a little bit because that way you can actually control where, you, where you, you're removing and moving the paint. You're only going to move it where you're actually putting the brush. It's not going to spread thinner all over the tank. I'm just coming in from the edges and kind of just tidying up these streaks. Usually just that involves thinning them down a little bit and making them more straight. Sometimes flipping the tank around makes it a little bit easier just to keep them straight and stuff. Enamels will dry if you leave them for like an hour or so. So that's why I do this within a couple minutes just so I can have a little bit of more ease when I'm trying to clean these up. In a couple areas I've gone back over top here and I'm reapplying some streaks just modifying it I always do this I always do everything in a couple of layers because I never like the the first run so I always go in and add a couple more streaks or a couple more rusty areas or whatever I'm doing for sooty effects here I actually use the same effect this is the enamel engine deck effect again I'm just applying it kind of spattery around there and what I have here is murky water nitro line. So I guess it's an enamel from Wilder. I used this in the last video for wet effects on the mud. I'm using it straight from the bottle, no thinning it, and I'm delicately applying it inside a couple of the streaks. I did this on maybe a third of the streaks. And I'm just, this is basically a glossy varnish. So it's gonna, when it dries, it's gonna be shiny. And as you can see here, it's going to make them look nice and wet and greasy. So I'm just doing that in a couple of areas. As I said initially, the actual product we chose, the enamel, has a little bit of shine to it once it dries. I'll show you that at the end of the video. But I'm doing this just to make there be a little bit of variation. And while that dried, I actually applied a couple more areas of the enamel. This is the original Engine Deck enamel product. Just for like some weird drips and stuff on the engine deck. A tank that's a little less weird, more like a Panther or a T-34, has a lot more interesting space for this kind of stuff. A lot more engine deck space. This tank's weird and cluttered, so there was, sadly wasn't much area for me to work with some greasy drips and stuff. So I just had a couple areas here where I apply a little bit, and then as before I get a little bit of thinner my brush, I just kind of smooth up the edges and make it blend a little bit and look more natural. So basically the same thing as the streaks, just now we're doing it on flat areas instead. And here you can see the shine that we get in the areas where I applied the, the glossy varnish, the wet effect. And as you can see, these areas here, they are a little bit shiny on their own, but not as shiny as the areas here where I actually put the varnish over top. And this just adds some more realism. It makes it look like it's actually wet in real life. You may have noticed that I removed a streak that I applied here earlier and instead added a whole bunch over here. I simply wiped it off with thinner and applied a lot more in this area to emphasize the crap coming out of the exhaust pipe because that makes more sense and also will draw the eye to our nice exhaust pipe. And also the exhaust pipe, it's a little bit lighter because I went back over with some of that burnt rust yellow pigment because the initial effect looked very nice but I found it was a little bit too it was too red and too dark compared to the rest of our tank, which is very, very light with our whitewash. So I made it a little more yellow. And with that, we have completed the greasy and the rusty effects on our tank, which basically finishes off our whole tank except for the metal tracks. I'm very, very happy with the effects here. I always love having some fun making the tanks look all greasy and sticky. And um, this sure was no exception. And it blends ni nicely with our wet effects on the lower hull areas as well. This area here I didn't show in the video, but I basically just added some grease effects in the same way where it would have dripped off from that extended edge under that little lip there. And here's our exhaust pipe. I'm really happy with this. This looks great. Super, super nice on the exhaust there. I don't get to do rust very often, but I, I do enjoy it. Maybe I should do a, a burnt out tank sometime soon. And also we got some nice kind of fuel and grease stains over here as well as the little blobs we added on the engine deck earlier. So there we go. Our tank is looking pretty nice now. 
these streaks also really nicely blend with the streaks we added from areas where the crew would be walking around and dragging stuff up and down the tank. At this point, all we have left to do in the tank is burnish and weather the metal tracks that I have for it. I will give that to you guys maybe next week if I can get out for you then, if not the week after. As always, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're inspired to weather a tank and I hope you learned something new. And also, huge thanks to the Patreon and PayPal supporters. They give me a little bit of money every month, which helps me buying paints and products that you guys see in the videos here. So as always, thanks for watching, happy modeling, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.